Let me know. You're on. Drawing the sun, sunbeam, moon gleam, and all that we know is never all that we know. And I can't read my own writing, so I have to start again. <laughs> That's fine. We're editing. That's fine. That's good. Cool. Yeah, I hope you're editing. Um, sunbeam, moon gleam, and all that we know is never all that we know. Yeah. This is the unedited one. <clears throat> This is not the one that went live. Uh, drawing the sun. Sunbeam, moon gleam, and all that we know is never all that we are. Isn't it funny when you think you don't know and you wonder why and don't think you know? Denying so loudly your reason to be, to, day to daydream and feel guilty. That's not me. While laughing with the birds in the wilderness found inside the tree which gave birth to me. The, to swim in the moonlight, to bathe in the sunlight, to drown in the daylight, for my night time is less. And my, mem and my memories have been shifted into something of bless. Keep daydreaming and ponder the maybes. Not cry over Sundays that end with a boom in a nobody's room. Dream of the weird and the fantastically strange. It is this wide open parade of trembling noise and enlivening sea. The daydream persists, persists, and it does exist when you believe. Dream of the things that make you go skydiving inside of your mind. It's a heartfelt surprise when you open your eyes. When you never burn over a thought or cry over milk being spilt on your head, then away it goes, all of the dread. I don't mind if I try and blow it away with absolutely no fear of decay. The semblance and romance, the silk-woven dreams of a wetness to touch and a heart on a sleeve. Make daisy chains naked and stare, and be in the second you think you can't bear. Be right here and I'll look at you more. Be over there and I'll just wave goodbye. For the spirit of madness he lives within me, dumbfounded by gladness. I swim through the breeze and open my lungs to feel no disease. For if I do shut down and suspect and cease being this encumbered body covered in petals and bee stings galore. I might surely drown if I look at the floor without any notice. End. Welcome to Abstract Illusions Radio, and we have just heard a fantastic poem by James Hawk, who is joining us from Australia. This is your host, Jennifer Hellman, and I'm doing a series with poets and the magic and the awe they created. So James, thank you so much for being with me on Abstract Illusions Radio and reading your poetry and introducing yourself to the world. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So let's introduce you a little bit better. Tell us a little bit about you, James. What specifically would, would you like to know? Like, where what, I'm from? Okay, where you're from, what inspires you, why you allowed yourself to be on the show? Basically, I'm a country boy. I come from countryside Victoria, which is the state in which I live in, in Australia. Um, it's the green state, filled with hills um, and many adventures to be had. The first 24 years of my life was spent there. I, I then came to the city to go to university and I stayed here um, only to be opened up even more to cultures that I hadn't seen, giving it a desire to go overseas. I spent a lot of time in China. I've lived over there for a year and a half, traveling backwards and forwards over a seven year period, open, opening me right up to so much more. The writing has always been there. It's always been in the background that I never showed anyone. Never showed anyone. It was so private. Like It was just for me until basically, how to put it in a word, you grow older, you become self-aware. That's obvious. Some of us do. Some of us, some of us struggle. Um, there were some very, very black things that happened over about 18 months ago and I started sharing it. I started going online 
and I started finding all these people who who liked it. And I was just like, no, it's really just words on paper. And they're going, no, this is really good. And I'm just going, no, please. And so they were just simple, simple little blogs. And then I found the Elephant Journal and I posted one. And what within within an hour, I got a response. Within one hour, I got a response and they said, we love it. And I'm just thinking, what the? Like, <laughs> and I was blown away. I, I'm, I'm very humble. I'm very kind of like, nah, it's really not that great. But no, they loved it. <laughs> they loved it. You're, you're, you're that country boy at heart. You're, you're. St- <laughs> um. So, what was it about it, about your experiences that opened you up and decided poetry is a great way of opening up? I have art flowing through my veins, as cliche as that sounds. I have always had it flowing through me. I'm a nature boy, first and foremost. When you put me on a mountain barefoot and I'm laying down under a tree, as simple as that sounds, that's where my poetry comes from. It comes straight from there and I am centred. I can write anything once I sit on the ground long enough. I've not read many Zen books. I know of Buddhism. I know of Zen and I only know what I've seen. But I've never had the patience to sit down long enough to read a Zen book. But I actually think I know it. I know it too. And so when you come about certain knowledge of yourself, it's much easier to write what I write. It's, it just flows out and I let it flow out because, yeah, look, as I said, I'm encouraged because people, people seem to like it. You know? right. we, we don't just like it. We love it. Um, it, it, it is was, encouraging. You know, it's... When and when I decided to do this series, you were you were the first name that popped in my head that wow, I really wanted I to to have on, um, because your poetry is just amazing. So, how has poetry changed your life? It's opened many more doors in in myself. Um, it's it's. It does help me express myself better to myself because that's what poetry is. It's, poetry is quite intimate. And if you can share it with someone that responds to it, then that's, that's just a bonus. But it does start very intimate. And you can reveal parts of yourself that you probably couldn't put into words before. And I actually honestly believe that word for word. I think it reveals more of you, the, the more confident you are in writing it. It reveals so much about you. What you've got, what you got to then do is follow through and, and, and find out what that is and, and just keep writing, keep creating. Um, I love the creation process, the creating process of, um, of writing. And I get very, very frustrated if I can't put a couple of words together. So I, 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 I'm, I'm getting increasingly frustrated if I, if I can't put those words together and I'm just thinking, oh, am I a writer? But I'm reminded. I'm reminded by my partner who's, who's very much in awe that I can write. Um, and, and by all of you guys, like, since, since finding you guys, like, it's... Um, it is. It, it's overwhelming, and that's yeah. Sometimes I run and hide, but um, but <laughs> don't but we it's... all? <laughs> that's when you get inspired to write more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's usually when I come up with the one that I just wrote, um, the sunbeam moon gleam, because it's that's one of the happier ones. It's one of the most positive ones that I've I've written. But I don't try to write positive ones. It's just you know sometimes whatever comes out, it comes out. And um, that one did come out one day, and I think it's well balanced. And I've got a few of those, and and um, I think the discovery, the self discovery, keeps evolving, keeps changing. Um, right. The more those those kind of words come out, yeah. So, do you find that poetry is almost like part of your spiritual practice? For me personally, yeah, yes. very much so, and I think it's 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 still growing very much. It's still it's still in adolescence at the moment, and I 
I am nurturing its growth as it is helping me find me. And I'm much more comfortable in my 40s as this person openly saying to how many thousands of people? <laughs> I'm a poet. <laughs> I'm a poet from Australia. And, and, and a really, really tremendous, I mean, the influence that you have given by sharing, I mean, you really have empowered so many people and that's why you're opening up and you show that dark side, but it lets us know that it's okay to have that dark side, to embrace it and expand it in a way because it's so beautiful to understand. Does that make it, sense? <laughs> it, it makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense. And I completely agree. I think exploring that darkness is the only way to get out of it, but embrace it as well because it's not going to go anywhere. No. It's always going to, it's always going to be there. So, you know, the Chinese have a, a thing where you've got to make friends with the ghosts. And if you can't make friends with the ghost, then you just got to leave. And so it's, it's a rough translation of something that they say, but, um, don't quote me directly, but, um, but yeah, you, you've got to, you've got to understand your darkness and do you know what? It's, it's not all bad. Some wonderful things can come out of it. I, I really, and it's been said many, many times, I think people, most artists, and when you look at the, the amount of artists that kill themselves, um, we dance with the darkness a lot. But it also helps us um, bring out into the light some incredibly creative visions and explorations and adventures that I don't think a lot of people can quite understand. And to put it out there in words, and especially the way you do it, there's an emotion behind it. And I, I think that's, you feel your words. You don't just hear them or read them. You feel them. And that makes a yeah. huge difference. I think poetry in general, the most genuine types of poetry are where you're writing for yourself. And exactly as you said, if you feel those words, then that feeling is going to, it's going to spring right out onto the reader and the reader is going to feel a myriad of things. And I mean, there is um, a lot of different places that I now connect with you on Facebook and um, I went to your website and what is your website address? Uh, it's James forward. So J A Y M Z. And then James backwards, just with the one Z, if that makes sense. Yes. It's a complicated, I've got to probably fix that up. Um, probably create something else. It's actually called The Dreaming Machine, which is based on a group that I do have um, on Facebook, which I'm trying to muster the best of the best, the ones that I think are just absolutely awesome. And this is to all of you who might be listening. But, um, and but I'll the the web yeah, yeah the website you'll have to you'll have to probably spell that one out because you've got it written down I think. Um. So it's J A Y M Z Z M Y A J blog dot com blog dot com. Um. It. His poetry really is, and he has images with it that are just incredible and very much worth seeking out. So would you like to share another one of your your poems? If you want. Please. I've got one. <laughs> I have got something here, and it's, it's one of a it, – it's very similar to the first one. It's called My Horses. A little bit dark, but yeah. I am under ice, yet warmed by a faraway sun. Not far from here, yet it's easy to get there. Resemblance of a distance between each thought, 
and relative dream. Recurring symbiotic patterns of relief. The substantial names being called, titles being discussed, retrograde. Panic from the time shift to my identifying beating chest. Yesterday was recurring and I couldn't struggle less. Instead, the horses fled. A voraciously in-depth encounter provokes my spirit to rise. All within and inside a tumultuous, fashionable, fashionable stare. I am breaking with energy, eyes wide, smelling the vegetables, picking the fruit, and smiling at a stranger. Seeing you now, screaming and yawning, something is still. I look around, and it's not me. Sleeping, and the vividness of the clear blue ocean, and the awakened sounds flood the grasslands beneath. My horses have returned after so many trips to the boundaries of a universe I once knew. They are white. They have names. And each speaks softly with a message. I swim bareback and ride them to Mars. I've not seen them this way. I know something is happening. Let's just say I'm awake. Lovely, 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 lovely. Um, <laughs> Pronouncing my syllables sometimes. <laughs> it, it, you know, the one thing I've really noticed is the influence of nature in your poems, your, in your poems um, and how much you become one with nature itself, with Mother Earth. I had wonderful hills right at my back doorstep. And if they weren't at my back doorstep at any period, I, I ventured long to get to them. I used to just ride my little BMX miles and miles um, to go to a, like, a, like, like a valley um, down by a creek and just sit there pretty much all day. And I'd, just, I'd create my, my own world. I did that all the way through my childhood. And I often did it alone and willingly. And I would just ride hours. Like, I'd be gone. I'd just be gone all day, like, from sun up to sundown. And I was always doing that. And going to China was, that was eye-opening because, like, the mountains are so much bigger. So much bigger. <laughs> so you, you, you really, you're like me that you need that nature to kind of nurture your soul i need it and it's basically something that if i don't have it's it's uh, the older i get as corny as it might sound i have a calling to it and i need to go back to it you know like i'm i'm finding that my time in the city sometimes gets a bit distracting and i just need to get back out there so we do we get out as often as we can Melbourne is surrounded by um, beautiful forests and countryside, and we do that as much as we can. And I, I just, I can't not do it. I just can't not. Like, I, I need to. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the best words, if we're, if we're sticking to the poetry, <laughs> I do ramble a bit. Um, yeah, that's where it comes from. That's, um, that's where it comes from. <laughs> is is what other things would you say inspire you? I'm very affected by things that go on, so some of the darker things. I'm I'm very I'm very affected by energies, big and small. I'm I try to interpret them. I try to interpret those energies, and sometimes that will result in a a pretty dark, kind of twisted, angry angsty kind of poem mm -hmm. but I still think it's something that's needed to be explored and that I'm I'm quite I maintain a healthy innocence and I am open to I'm open to seeing things in front of me I'm open to seeing the things that people neglect people don't see you know like things that people forget and I'm, I'm that true artist where regaining that innocence, that, mm -hmm. that's the goal. Yeah, regaining that innocence. I mean, that's, that's, 
that's the goal overall. I think Picasso said it. I think Picasso said that the true goal of an artist is to regain that innocence because we're taught not to have it. And an artist naturally re- rediscovers it. So, and that innocence is beautiful. As an adult, that innocence is just sometimes quite overwhelming and it's, it, it can open everything of you, crack you open, basically. And, and that's the beauty of it. Now, with you delving into those dark sides, do you think of any of the parts of writing such poetry having a bit of a downside to delving in too deep, like feeling too vulnerable? Yeah, it can have its effects. Um, if I write something, I might not share it, but I might write something about exactly where I am at that point, and it's usually very dark, very black. And then I close the book, and I try to tell myself I'm not a writer anymore, and I just don't want to do it anymore. And I'll, I'll, I'll in all truth, that kind of behaviour if you can call it a behaviour, let's just call it a behaviour for argument's sake. Um, okay. It doesn't last as long as it did. I'm finding that I'll just open that book up again and just be brave enough and just write it and I'll share it, you know. I created a group so I can just share things, you know. So I think I think you've got to try not to close that book. You've, you've got to try to just keep going, even if it's just you write a post and say, I'm not having a great week. I'm not having a great time at all. And if you start writing that, it does, t- for me, it turns into something else. And I'm talking a lot now, but I I generally try to not write politically, not write in a, in a, in a worldly way, more of an emotional way. So I you, don't so you... sway to articles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you focus more on the individual, the depth within, yeah. the individual um, kind of looking out at the group. Would you say? Do you ever mm. find you? Would you ever find yourself when you're writing or reading what you're writing? Do you ever feel like you're witnessing something, versus the writer? Definitely. Um, I think we've had a conversation about that. It's. I, I read some of the poetry on my newsfeed in the, in the groups, in, in the blogs that we're all kind of part of. Um, and sometimes it just hits you, right? And it's just like a conversation that you, you're supposed to have at that moment. Yeah, I, I can read any number of poems by various people um, and it's just something that resonates straight away. It's just like, you you really don't feel alone when when that happens like you don't feel so alone it's it's this synchronicity like i'm i'm starting to learn about this synchronicity thing and it's it's absolutely magic when that happens even on the dark day and almost even more so on those dark days it's Basically, like clear you you feel that someone's there yeah and you're not alone and somebody understands and they're in the same place and it's amazing I I sometimes feel like I haven't found just like a tribe I found a soul family member yeah yeah for sure is just like really a part of me it's 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 beautiful you've done it Carolyn has done it Brandy's done it some of the other people that are part of the series and it's like I really have found another family, um, part of my family that I think these days we all really are looking for. So yeah, it's, very much so, yeah. Um, so if you were to, if you met somebody who was thinking about writing poetry, what would you suggest to them? If they were thinking about writing it, the conversation yeah. would tend, yeah, it, I would first ask, can you write poetry? And they go, oh, I think I can. No, you know you can. And this is where I start taking over and I just say, you write it down. You keep writing it 
and don't edit it. Don't think about it. And, you know, just build, build it up. Build, build up that confidence within yourself to write it and just go, yeah, I really like this. Try not to think about what anyone else is thinking about it. Never actually think about what anyone else is thinking about it because it's a very personal thing. Poetry is an ancient art. They don't say it's an ancient art for no reason. It's one of the oldest. And it's very intimate. So if you're able to write poetry, write it. Write as much of it as you can because it might just help you. It might just help you get through something that just doesn't feel right. And it might help somebody else get through where they are. And, and, and more so, yeah. It eventually, when you, when you break out right. and, you, and you, you know, like I, I found you guys, you know, um, I encourage anyone out there who is listening, yeah, like seek out these groups and I'll, I'll, I'll let you list them off. But you know, uh, there's there's many there's many wonderful groups and submit submit those poems. It it really is beautiful and we've come to the end of another beautiful and insightful poets interview and James Hawk. I just I thank you I thank you I thank you I thank you um, for showing up and and writing and please don't ever stop writing or putting your work out there. Um, you are a blessing to many people. Thank you very much. I am, I am, don't know what to say. <laughs> and that's, I'm fine. Just, uh, <laughs> that's fine. I'm an Aussie from the country and I'm just gonna say thank you. That's yeah. fine. No, I thank you for the opportunity to speak to your listeners and thank you. And with that, this is Jennifer Hellman saying with each breath of air, we hope you gain new insights, inspiration, and information. Till next time, have a great day. <laughs>